welcome to uh, Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks, and we're here on September 28th, and we're going to be making borders today. So I picked out two borders from the Creative Memories blog. They are borders that had sketches with them, so we can kind of get an idea of what the um, border looked like. They show here this top one is made with winter woods and use the tree line border punch, but then they give us a sketch. So that really helps us kind of see what's possible, right? We can see here on the two different sketches what's possible if we, you know, just use whatever tools we have, right? We can use different papers, different tools, and get a totally different look. So that's why sketches are great because you may have first looked at that and said, I don't need a winter border. Well, that's okay. You don't have to have a winter border. We'll make something else with it. I am diving in today. Both of my borders are going to be Halloween borders because I wanted to play with the Happy Hauntings collection. And so I will be demonstrating those borders um, and today with that, but you can make them with anything. I will talk about various um, tools you could use. A lot of the techniques that we're going to talk about today are, can be carried over to those other tools, depending on what kind of um, pictures you have and what you need for your theme. So we're going to switch over here to my desktop and we will go ahead and show you here. So um, I've got my stickers here for the Happy Hauntings collection. I'm gonna set those aside. Got my directions. Before we dive too much further into this, I do have to mention that if you printed the directions off the handout off my blog yesterday morning, um, step number two for the top border here, um, I when I was editing and formatting the handout, I accidentally deleted, it should say 12 and 12 by three and three quarters or three fourths. I accidentally deleted the four. If you recently printed it, you're gonna see that you have the three fourths there. If you did not, you might need to just write in three and three fourths. So this top one that we're gonna put together, um, the items I'm using, well, Okay, step back just a quick second. The big thing about sketch number, this, this first one that we're doing, what I want you to think about and how I approached this was scenes. I want you to imagine we have a 12 inch tall border here. And I want you to think about is we have three different scenes, all right? So they have repeated the scenes to be all the same. You could make those scenes different if you wanted to. I thought about that with my Halloween. I could have different Halloween scenes for each of these three sections. Um, ultimately, I am gonna end up with all three being the exact same, but if you think about it as scenes, you're setting different scenes for these this vertical border here. So with that in mind, the scene I am going to be setting, I am gonna be using my bats the Bats and Stars Border Maker cartridge. This is a new one from Creative Memories, and it's pretty fantastic, I'm gonna say. I really dig it. So I'm gonna be using the bats. So we're gonna have some spooky bats flying in the sky, and then I'm gonna have some ghosts. So this was the Border Maker cartridge, the ghost chain that came out last year, and I'm gonna have some ghosts. They're gonna be flying up by my bats. Now, the other part that I'm going to do here, and this is um, kind of fun because this was an idea shared by another advisor in the advisor group for Creative Memories. Um, Candace Blash Winter shared a fantastic border idea using the Jammies border maker cartridge. And let's take a look. We flip this over. If we kind of cover those up, imagine what you kind of see there, right? You see some headstones. So we're going to be punching jammies in gray, and we're going to have to make some headstones out of the jammies. And then we're going to use the grass border maker cartridge. So you might need to make some substitutions. If you're making Halloween borders, you may just, you know, bring in your different borders. You do not have to use border maker cartridges. You can use border punches. You could use stickers. You can use laser cut embellishments. You can just use punches. We're setting scenes. So imagine, just keep in mind, we're setting scenes. We're gonna make little, almost square, more like rectangular scenes that we will then put on the side of, um, stack on top of each other on the border. So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to punch. I'm going to quickly punch. I need to punch my chains. So I need ghosts. I need jammies. And I know I'm going to need two sets of the grass. So I am going to punch the jammies in gray. I have some gray cardstock. The gray um, 
should be coming back. It was, they, um, it retired. They brought us charcoal and now gray is going to be working its way back into our lineup later this fall. I am using some white shimmer and that's going to be my ghosts. And then I have some olive card stock that I'm going to be using for my grass. So these are, I'm just going to quickly punch the chains, kind of get those out of the way. Like I said, I'm going to need two sets of grass. There we go. My uh, cartridge holder sometimes likes to be a little naughty. So I'm punching the grass and I'm going to trim it at uh, just a little over an inch. I'm going to ultimately be stacking the grass, um, putting a little bit of grass in front of and a little grass behind those uh, headstones. So I'm going to punch it just slightly over an inch. This is all going to be super flexible. It's really going to depend on what punches you're using. So just want you to think, just give yourself a little bit of room. It's, it's, it is a little bit easier if I needed to narrow this down, I could probably come in and trim this narrow if I needed to. So that's why I give myself that inch is a good place to start. And I need to punch another one. Olive is one of my favorite colors of green. It is currently available as part of the it's currently available as part of the Croptoberfest sampler pack. You get just one sheet in there, but trust me, one sheet is amazing. I would love for them to give us that color. It was available, uh, I think before as a, um, a bonus pack with the cardstock buffet. Cause I have other sheets of it. I just don't have a ton, but it is part of the cardstock sampler that's available with Croptoberfest. So there's my two strips of grass. Now I'm going to swap out and I'm going to do the uh, ghosts. So we'll punch some ghosts here. I just need one chain of ghosts. Oh, my little ghost here at the end got kind of bent up. And so it's being a little, there we go. I was going too quick. Sometimes you just have to go a little slower. Don't try to rush it, especially when you're using a little bit of the thinner paper. These shimmer papers punch wonderful. Um, I do like these, um, the, some of these shimmer papers, like the white is just a little bit thinner than some of the other older shimmer papers we have. And that just punches so wonderful. I don't have to force anything. And then I need a gray jammies. As I mentioned, we're going to be using the great jammies to make headstones. This is not my idea. It was shared by a fellow advisor. Her name is Candace Blash Winter, and she shared that in our advisor group um, as a, you know, a suggestion on what to use, how to use the jammies border maker cartridge in kind of a fun way. So if you just needed to use, if you just needed headstones, maybe you're doing some cemetery visits, she brought it up as a, um, for genealogy. You could just come in here like such. Get those, well, you don't even have to have grass behind it, but you could get grass in front of it. And there you can kind of see those headstones just sticking up there. If you wanted to, you could hold on to all the little heart pieces and just glue those back in place. And then you wouldn't have to worry about seeing any of the holes that the hearts play, um, make in the jammies. So um, I'm ultimately gonna be cutting these apart for my particular um, design. Uh, but if you needed just a row of headstones, that's a great option to use the jammy border maker cartridge. So thank you, Candace, for that wonderful idea. All right. So I've got some pieces here going. So I'm, that's great. I'm going to set these aside for a few minutes. Um, 
One of the things I needed to think about here, I've got those pieces. I know those are going to be kind of my decorative elements that come across. I see here that I've got kind of this swoopy thing going. You can see it in the sketch. So we would be using the decorative trimmer. Um, so um, what I'm going to be doing here is when I'm thinking about this, I got to think about what my background looks like. Now my background, since I'm using the bats, I've got holes. I need to have something behind my bats. I need to have a base to put my bats on. My base is going to be from the Happy Hauntings um, paper collection is going to be this border here. And so what I need to do here is I'm actually going to be, um, I'm trying to think of the order in which to do this because I was mentally going through like, how's the best way to explain this? I talked about setting scenes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, I'm using this as my, as my base for setting my scenes on top of. I am not going to trim anything yet to make my height or my width because I need to make sure that I'm going to have, I may need to customize the width of my pieces based on these that I'm using. Cause look, if you look here, I've got to make sure that I'm not going to have kind of a weird spacing of my ghost, right? I don't want to all of a sudden just be having half a ghost and random pieces of ghost. So I need to keep that in mind, the spacing here. Trees on their example are a little bit more forgiving, right? Um, it's not a big deal if you see half a tree. Here, I feel like half a ghost, if I see three solid ghosts and then half a ghost, it's going to look a little weird. So I'm going to um, keep that in mind when I'm putting together everything that I've got these ghosts that I need to, I don't want to have my ghosts just be very randomly cut. So that being said, this is going to be my base background. Now I need to layer on something that I've punched this, my bats and stars border. I'm using black shimmer paper. You could use black cardstock, but I really like the shimmer paper. Bats and stars is what we call a knockout punch, meaning it is, it stays attached to our paper. It's only knocking out the stars and the bats. The top edge is not impacted. I, if I punched it right now, I would have a solid black line here at the top with some bats and stars staying attached to my paper. So whenever you have a punch like that, a knockout style punch where all we're punching out is the decorative elements, we're not altering the edge, you can actually use one of our decorative blades for the trimmer to um, go ahead and a trim, make that decorative edge, and then punch. Your decorative edge will remain. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use the wave blade on the edge of my black shimmer paper here and give myself a little bit of that decorative edge. So I'm just gonna, and I usually just come over to about an eighth of an inch. I wanna make sure I'm cutting off enough that it's not gonna be weird. And do you wanna do a nice firm pass when you're using the decorative blades because it's hard to go back and maintain the, the, the um, decorative edge. It can get messed up. So now I have, as you can see there, well, kind of see there, it's probably hard for you to see. I've got that wave edge to my black shimmer paper. Now what I can do here is go ahead and punch that edge. So I'm gonna punch it with my black, or my stars and bats, or bats and stars. A great thing about bats and stars, if you are the type, if you like to make shaker cards, you're going to love these bats and stars. You're going to want to just start saving these, punch them in different colors, even if you just want to use them in your layouts. Um, the stars are pretty tiny. The bats also are, they come in like, you know, three different sizes here, but they're pretty fantastic. So the punch leavings from the bats and stars, border maker cartridges, in all honesty, you just sweep them all to the side, make a collection, and you've got some confetti or um, like I said, for um, using, if you want to make a shaker card or some sort of shaker element for your um, paper crafting. So now we have the bats and the stars across the top. 
Now, this black is ultimately going to be the base for each one of my scenes. So I'm gonna to start to show you how this is gonna to come together. I've got my bats. Now I've got my ghosts. Now I would have my headstones. I will ultimately be cutting apart my headstones, but if you wanted just to make a 12 inch border that just is horizontal, you could do this. You wouldn't even have to stack this as a vertical. Actually, I need to come in here and put my one row of grass. I wanna give some space because my ghosts are floating. And we'll come in here with one row of the headstones, a little bit of grass poking out behind them. And then I'm gonna come in with the other grass and I'm gonna flip it over, turn it the other direction um, so that my blades of grass are going the opposite way. So here is if I was doing a line, I would definitely wanted to have saved those gray heart pieces to go back into jammies. I can see where the gray, uh, those hearts are poking through. So that's something I'm not worried about it because like I said, I'm actually not gonna be doing this as an entire row. I'm not doing a 12 inch border here. I am gonna be um, ultimately cutting things into segments and creating those three little scenes. So I had the scene there and I just totally, wiped it out of the way. What I wanted to talk about was I need to work in, per my sketch, I need to work in my decorative, this decorative um, wave here, all right? So I've got, I'm gonna be using this orange. It has the moon, the phases of the moon on one side, the other side is stripe. This is still from the Happy Hauntings collection. And you can actually see here how I've done. Um, I honestly, I played with this yesterday to make sure I knew what I was doing today. And I'm just gonna, well, I didn't mean to use the decorative blade to start it. So I gotta switch back to my straight blade. And I've got that straight edge, which is fine. So now I'm starting just like you guys would be starting with that straight edge. I'm gonna come in here to my decorative trimmer. I'm centering it. And I've talked about that before. Centering it means I'm coming down a quarter inch from the top and a quarter inch from the bottom. I always start my cuts that way. And I'm, the first thing I need to do is I need to trim off that straight edge. So I'm starting my wave. The next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push this out and I want my piece to be just over half an inch or so. So I actually came out to it, it's technically gonna be about three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm three, if you see up here at the top, I'm coming out, there's one. You can see there, there's these little, um, the little squares. I'm going one, two, and then three is where I'm gonna line things up. So three tick marks or three of those, um, it actually worked out to be rough. Well, by their measurements, it's three quarters of an inch. I'd have to use my ruler to see if it's truly a three quarter of an inch border. So there we go. So three quarters of an inch. So now you're seeing you're seeing my scene start to take shape, right? Right now it's a 12 inch wide scene, but I'm, I can chop it into segments and I can stack those segments. So that's, that's an idea here, right? That I could just create a 12 inch wide border, cut it into segments and stack those segments. Now, the one thing to remember when I stack the segments, I have 12 inches tall. So I need to make sure that I don't want, definitely do not want to have my scene be taller than four inches. If I stack three, four inch um, scenes, I would have a, um, have a 12 inches. I actually need it to be a little bit less because of, um, the spacing. And I determined I want my scene to be, um, about three, three and a quarter to no more than three and a half inches tall. And I'm going to cut that with my decorative trimmer. So I want to make it, I do not want this bottom point of my border to be any wider than three and a half inches when I'm using my decorative trimmer. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to have a ruler handy because sometimes I need a ruler with my decorative trimmer. 
and I want my edge to be parallel to this band I just cut. So I'm going to feed this in. I'm cutting it with a wave edge. And remember, I do not want to be, I do not want my bottom edge to be any more than three, three and a quarter to three and a half. Cannot go more than three and a half. So I'm just going to use my ruler to make this easy. I'm using a ruler, coming in with my ruler. I'm measuring up here at the top. And the reason I'm measuring here at the top is because this is the long, one of the longer points. If I see my various peaks and my dips, I have a dip over here and that's where I want to make sure is not anymore. The dip is actually the longest part and I don't want it to be any more than three and a half inches. I'm going to go just shy. I'm a little more, I'm about three and three eighths to the top edge. So I'm holding it in place and I'm going to come down and I'm going to measure at the bottom too. About three and three eighths. three and three eighths, three and three eighths. I can look at my pattern here too and see, I'm seeing a little bit of the white poke through on some of these stars. And honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it to be decent enough. Since I'm gonna be cutting these into segments, it should be fine. All right, so there we go. Once again, as I mentioned, we would be able to just make this border. I mean, this could be just a border. You guys could just use this as a, nice chunky border on your page. If you didn't want to do a vertical border, if you needed a horizontal border, you can see how this comes together. Put the gravestones, the headstones in place. Put on the grass. And then I would use this band to come across here. And it covers up some of that green but it leaves a little bit of the black at the bottom. All right, so that would be my border. If I just wanted a 12 inch border. Now you could just glue this all together, adhere it all together and chop this into segments. But one of the things I mentioned, remember, was these lovely ghosts, I don't wanna chop my ghosts at weird intervals. I think the sketch here, it wants us to do two and a half inch wide chunks. So if I come in here and I start measuring, what's two and a half inches? Well, two and a half inches is right next to this guy's mouth. Then I would come over another two and a half inches and I'm cutting another guy in half, another two and a half inches. And I'm, you know, starting to cut my ghost in half. I really don't want to do that. I would like my ghost to be centered. So what I'm going to actually end up doing is cutting. I'm going to cut my grass. So my, my headstones and my ghosts, I'm gonna custom cut. These pieces right here, so my bats, my grass, and my wavy orange piece, I can cut just using my trimmer. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut those into, um, I actually think I'm gonna do, let me look, I'm gonna measure my ghosts. Two and a half inches is not quite, this is gonna be crazy. This is where I get to be a little bit picky. Two and a half inches is right down the, is I'm cutting off an arm of a ghost. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come over to, um, I think I'm going to cut things at two and five eighths. This is an area where you guys can do it how you want. You could stick with the two and a half inches that they have here and just cut your stuff. I'm going to come over to two and five eighths because if I do that, it looks like I should be able to basically just cut four in between every fourth ghost, just cut a straight line and that should be two and five eighths inches wide. So I'm gonna cut these pieces to two and five eighths inches wide. If you're following the directions, you're gonna to wanna to cut to two and a half. I'm going rogue and I'm gonna to go to two and five eighths. So I am just gonna start cutting two and five eighths. So that's just one eighth past two and a half. Make sure I've got my straight blade. I'm going to cut my, put my seams over here. Two and five eighths. And 
and you'll ultimately be able to get four of these out of there with a little bit of a scrap left over. The fourth one, you could still set your scene and just use it in a different spot as a little bit of an embellishment of elsewhere on your piece. So I'm gonna keep all four of my pieces and I'm just gonna keep cutting. Everything's gonna be cut at two and five eighths. For me, you might be cutting it at two and a half. Sometimes you have to make those adjustments based on the, the, the tools you're using. Maybe you're using a laser cut border and that two and a half is not right. Maybe it's two and a quarter. Maybe it's, you know, even wider than that. So you just have to kind of, you know, look at your, the, what you're using and make that determination. Are you going to be cutting things at weird spaces if you cut them based on the directions? Like my grass, it doesn't matter. I cut my grass at any segment and it would be fine. But I really don't want to cut down the middle of a ghost's head. So the wave is a little bit trickier two and five eighths. I'm having to go either top or the bottom, depending on where I can make a stable cut, like where I can get stability and make sure I'm cutting straight. Come back here to the top for this last one. If you do not have jammies, um, I would just recommend making some square, um, some rectangles out of gray, just cut a strip of gray cardstock um, about half inch to three quarters inch wide, and then just cut some little strips. And you can, if you wanna use the scissors to kind of round the corners or whatever, you can certainly just make your own little headstones, your own set of headstones. So you don't have to have jammies, just if you do have jammies that you just have those headstones that have those kind of fun little notches at the top that really give that nice headstone effect. So don't overthink it. If you don't have jammies, don't, don't worry about it. You're actually gonna see what I'm gonna be doing in here is I'm gonna be coming in and I need, I need about three of these um, jammies per scene. So I'm gonna only work on doing three scenes right now. I'm not gonna put the fourth one together. So I need nine jammies. Um, and I only want, I really just want the ones that don't have the heart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut off the sleeves of the jammies into just straight headstones, straight rectangles. So there you can see that you, if you just have rectangles, you can certainly make your own headstones. They don't have to be made using jammies. If you were making bigger headstones, you could use um, the corner rounder, the Creative Memories newest, the latest corner rounder. You can back feed those in and get that notch. I think this is a little too small to try to do it um, with the corner rounder, but if you needed to make Maybe you wanted to make a set of small headstones as part of your border, but you wanted a bigger one as a journaling box. Um, you could use the, uh, the corner rounder, the newest one, the blue and white. If you back feed it in, you can get that notched, carry over that same shape. So I think one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I just need one more. All right, so there I've got my nine pieces. My ghost, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my ghost every fourth ghost just down the middle. I have two little ghosts left over. You could easily toss in, like if you do the shaker card, Include some of those ghosts, cut apart some of those ghosts to put them in with your bats. Definitely very spooky. You could even make 
I mean, cut off some little headstones and put those in there too, right? You can make, put the RIP in there. Something different, something cute. Okay. So now I'm going to put together my scenes. So I've got my bats here. And imagine I'm going to start you can see here if I were to start stacking these. Now, I haven't cut my, my purple background yet, but you can kind of see how these will start to come together. I've got my three scenes. I will be ultimately trimming this out. It's gonna be, I know that this is going to be, um, it's not gonna be any wider than my black, this purple base. So I know I can actually, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this to two, and five eighths inch wide. I am ultimately going to be cutting off the top and the bottom, but I can go ahead and just put my pieces on here and get, you guys can start to see how it would come together. And then my ghosts, my grass, I'm going to put two grasses on top of each other like this. And then what I'll do is I'll actually just tuck in my headstones. So I could put two or three, but this way I can customize where they go. I can make sure they're maybe tucked in by some shorter blades of grass instead of getting hidden behind long bits of grass, or maybe some are closer to each other. And then I will bring in, and I just have to find the piece that matches. Each one of my orange pieces here should match one of my black pieces. So there I can see how those all stack up. And then this one here can be maybe my, my fourth scene that I'm going to, I'm going to put someplace else. Maybe I'll just make that a little square that just gets put else somewhere on the opposite page. So I don't need to make two whole borders. I can use that same border, that same scene, that same element, and just make a small one that carries over to the second page. So I'm going to start adhering, putting these in place. The second border that we're putting together today is gonna to go together super quick. This first one here is just because there's so many different pieces to it, takes a little bit more time. And I actually may not worry about, I'm probably just gonna put this first scene together, adhere my black pieces in place, and then um, make the, the frames that go around it, those base pieces, so that we can um, keep kind of moving on for the, live today. And then of course you'll be able to see the final, I'll finish up the final afterwards. There's just lots of little elements to this. When I'm putting this second row of grass on, I'm only putting adhesive at the bottom because I want to be able to tuck it in. So I need to make sure I'm leaving myself some room in there to tuck in that those headstones. And I can come in later and with my pen, um, journaling pen and write in, uh, maybe just put some initials on there, the headstones or put RIP, um, you know, whatever you want there if you want. And you don't have to do anything or you can outline them. You can give a little bit of detail um, it might help them stand out just a little bit more if I were to come in and do some um, pen detailing around the outside. And then, yeah, there's the border. The orange edge that I need. Okay. So we can see how these are all going to stack. Now, I know I'm going to have a 12 inch tall piece. I can see in step number one, where creative memories wanted us to start was creating a 12 inch tall strip of the back. So you can see they use the plaid, um, paper to make the back and they use a three and three quarter inch wide strip. 
Now my strip, remember my strip is about an eighth of an inch wider overall because I use instead of two and a half inch strips, I use two and five eighths inch. I'm two and five eighths inch here. I am an eighth of an inch wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and where they tell me to cut three and one quarter inch, I'm gonna add an eighth of an inch to that, which will take me to two, or excuse me, to three and three eighths inch. And I am gonna be using this white, um, kind of white and gray tonal piece. It kind of looks like the cobwebs. The opposite side is the bats. So I need to cut this to two, excuse me, three and three eighths inch wide because I've made mine a little bit wider than what Creative Memories has in their directions. Three and three eighths. Once again, this is working with fractions. Three and three eighths. And it stays at 12 inches tall. The next piece they want, they say to cut a two and three quarter inch by 11 and a half inch tall strip. So I need to add an eighth of an inch to my width. So I will cut this and I'm gonna write this one down. I am gonna cut this at two and seven eighths, but I can still keep my height of 11 and a half. I am gonna be using the, um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use this, um, this, the moon, the phases of the moon paper. I was thinking, well, maybe I would just substitute in like orange. Actually, let me see. I have the pumpkin card stock. The pumpkin might be a nice deep. Well, I think I'm gonna stick with the, the tonal, this phases of the moon. So, Two and seven eighths. I'm glad I wrote that down. So I can just come back to that. Two and seven eighths. So not quite three inches. And just using my straight blade. You would not necessarily have to do the double math that they're doing on this. You could just have your base and maybe just do stitching around if you don't want to put all these uh, pieces of paper on there. And then I need to trim it to 11 and a half. So I'm going to take off a half an inch. All right. So this would go on. Here is such, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this in place. It goes right in the center of that white base piece. Now what I need to do is I need to trim down the height of my backing piece. So my backing piece, really all I did was I, um, I varied the width. So my width, I have an eighth of an inch on either side. And I don't see where they give us a measurement where we'd have a base piece. So I think they were just gonna have the, the sections that you would just literally stack on each other. But I, because of the way I had these, um, the bats in here, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna measure at the bottom. I've got the top place where I want it here, I'm gonna grab my ruler and lay it down. And I am gonna trim this at I'm gonna trim it at eleven and a quarter, it looks like. Yeah, eleven and a quarter. So my base, my purple piece here is um, two and five eighths by 11 and one quarter. So I need to cut off three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Yep, that looks good. I've got a pretty uniform bit of orange all the way around. Now 
So yes, there is, um, I see a comment here in the Facebook um, comments for the Facebook Live that there is a thing. You could have just built the, the width border and then you could tuck those headstones in. Definitely could have done that. That was definitely one way you could do it. So if that's a, a part that works out best for you, that works out great. Go ahead and do it that way. It would save the cutting and the measuring. Um, for me, because I um, wanted to make sure I was cutting my, uh, my, uh, oh, my wonderful little uh, ghost at a certain width, that was just how I put it together. So play around with it. You'll find different ways. The cuts, make a 12 inch border, cut it into those widths and strips, and you can see how this is going to stack up. So I am going to put these all together. I will finish it up after the end of this and we will, um, and I'll show and I'll have it as a final, um, I'll put it onto my, um, Facebook page. So I'm just going to quickly stack up these pieces, adhere it all together. So I can't wait to see what you guys create, how you create it. Like I said, create that 12 inch border, chop it into pieces and you stack them and you've got your, a bit to go. If you want to be, um, if for whatever reason you need to be a little bit more precise with your placement, you can do it the way I just showed. All right, next up, we are going to put together the border number two. The bat piece, I see a comp question about that. I cut, um, I cut my width to two and five eighths inches. The, um, the, the directions in here said to use two and a half, but because of the width of my ghosts, I needed to go just a smidge wider to two and five eighths. All right. So next up, we're going to be doing the, um, the border from the January 5th, 2021, uh, sketch. And this particular one, we're going to be very straightforward with it. It's using the mandala punch and you're showing you how to punch both sides. And so you can kind of get that um, stacked circle look. You could, of course, if you wanted to do, I think it, oh man, if you had something where you needed records, you could just cut some um, black circles and put the, um, you know, the dots in the middle, like they used to have the titles on those records. Um, but what I thought would be great is we're going to use the web the cobweb frame punch to do this. So you can follow along the blog um, uh, directions. I'm gonna be pretty much, I think I'm sticking with their, um, their, their directions, except I'm using the, way, the web punch. So my base piece, we're gonna follow this one along, just step one. They want us to cut um, the salmon pink and they use the decorative blade on the, the salmon pink and you can't see it. It's the very base where they show the dark gray in the sketch is their salmon pink. So it's three and a quarter inch wide. I am actually going to be using this purple, orange, or purple and kind of golden moon is my base piece. So where they're talking about cutting it with the Victorian, I'm actually not gonna cut this one with the Victorian edge. I am going to be using the scallop edge, but I'm going to use it on the next layer up. So I am still just going to cut this with the two and a half inch, or they want to cut it three and a quarter by 12. So I'll come here to three and a quarter. And that should work well, three and a quarter inch, and I'm cutting it just with the straight blade. So there we go, three and a quarter inch. Here's the base of my layout. They want us to go ahead and have a um, kind of an accent piece. And they want us to go ahead and cut the olive, which is the lighter thin strip in the sketch that you see. And they want you to cut that to two and three quarter inch wide using the olive green tonal paper. Um, what you can do here, instead of cutting a big piece, you could cut two thin strips. And that's actually what I'm gonna do. I am using, I'm going to use the glitter effect. This is not actual glitter paper, just kind of looks like glitter paper. And then what I'm going to do here is go ahead and um, I'm using my scallop blade because I thought it mimicked the scallops of my web. And I want to make sure that I'm using this, this, the, the scallop, you know, the, the peak part. I don't want the, um, the scallop. I'm using the wave edge. I always call that the wave edge versus the scallop you know, when you cut a scallop, you get one side kind of has that wave 
the bubbles and the other side has the waves with the pink. Um, so that's, I wanna make sure that both of my edges have that, the peaks. So when I do this, I have to pay attention to the direction of my blade. So I am gonna put my blade in going my peaks, if you guys can see, maybe not the peaks there. I want to have those going to uh, the peaks are, are here at this side so that I can cut just a thin strip. And so my, I'm going to have it with my scallop going my title going to the left and I'm just going to cut a thin strip. It's only about a half inches wide. I am not going to cut that big wide piece. I want to preserve some of this paper. And so I'm going to cut it at about a half an inch. So there's my one set of my scallops, the peaks. Now the opposite side here, you can see I have the waves, or excuse me, I have the scallop. That was my wave side. This is the scallop side. I want to, I'm gonna cut this again at half an inch. I don't care if one side is that wave. I really just need the other side to have the peaks or the scallops. Yeah, I want the peaks is what I want. So sorry, I'm not getting my terms right. Because what I'll be able to do is layer one here, layer this on the other side. And then they want us to come in with a two and five eighths inch wide piece of paper. And that two and five eighths inch I am using the dark, this, the, it's actually the purple that I used on the first border. The opposite side has this tonal orange with the dark icons. The challenge I ran into is that when I cut the other side, I wasn't paying attention and I've got all of my icons are going horizontal. So if I wanted to use this as a background for this border, I would have to make this a horizontal border, which totally could happen. It's not a big deal. You're seeing here as if I were to do this, I really don't have a direction, even though there's um, the moons here in the middle, those are going to be covered. So this could easily turn horizontal. My cobweb could go across the middle here, no problem. But I want this to be a vertical border. That's kind of was my fun thing today is we're making vertical borders. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this at two and five eighths inch. And that is part of direction number two two, step two, two and five eighths. Oh, and I cut it with the scallop blade because I forgot to. So I'm actually going to cut this at two and a half inches. Make it, uh, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to try to cut off those scallops. I don't want to cut another piece. I'm just going to try to cut off. So I'm going to be slightly There we go. And I'll still be able to come in here, put some adhesive on the outside edge. I use the mini tape runner if I wanted to and attach these thin pieces. Those scalloped edges that I cut. So instead of cutting that really wide piece, I'm just putting the strips in. And that's, I use that technique often. I don't necessarily like to waste paper. And if I feel like I've got a good base that I can just put those strips into place. I really probably could have done strips of this one too and layered them in behind. I've got this solid middle piece to act as kind of my stable base. And then I can layer in the pieces behind it. Creative memories is always going to give us probably a, be a little bit more, um, you know, they're going to make it, they're going to make the directions a little more simpler by just having you cut those pieces and stack them. So there we go. I'm going to put this in place.
And this just goes all the way to the bottom. This is not one of those that's framed out. So that's kind of nice. And you, everything's just 12 inches. All right. So there we go. Okay. So this is our, my base piece. Now I got to make the cobweb that goes on top. So I'm going to use the white shimmer paper again. I want a little bit of a sparkle to my cobweb and I've got my cobweb frame punch. Now for the cobweb frame punch, we're going to be, um, go ahead and I'm, we're going to punch our cobweb just getting started. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be punching, cutting and punching again. So we're actually going to have, it's going to look like these little just cobwebs stacked right on top of each other. So what I'm going to recommend that you do here is we're going to actually line it up here at, instead of using this front guide, the black front guide, we're going to use the silver line that's here on the edge because this is a frame punch. It has the silver edge. We're going to use that silver edge. It'll become apparent in a little while, while we're doing that silver edge. You're going to punch and just keep punching down the line. I will come back and grab that edge that I didn't, that first bit. Always make sure your patterns line up with the blue. That's what I'm defaulting to. I'm making sure that we're covering up the blue pattern. So I'm going to have that half cobweb on the end. If I had started in the middle here, or excuse me, if I started at the black line here, I would have had six full cobwebs down the side. But since we started over here at this, this edge, I have the half cobwebs at either end. Like I said, I will explain why in just a minute. We need to cut this at just past two inches, just a smidge past. So the peak of the cobwebs are just a tiny bit past two inches. You just want to see those peaks clear that two inch mark and cut. Now here is where I find it to be easier to start. If I had started, if I had needed to start right in here, it's kind of hard for me to get my paper in there and make sure I'm perfectly lined up with that mark when I've got such a small piece. There's nothing sticking out here at the top that is telling me for sure I'm in the right spot. And there's, it's really hard over here for me to make sure I've got the right spot of my, um, my cobweb. I wanna make sure my pieces are, you know, um, I'm punching the opposite side, the mirror side of the cobweb. But because I punched, I can come over here and line this up and you may have to practice this. I may punch this and it may not be perfect, but it should be pretty close. I'm gonna line up. And punch. So there you can see, I've got that cobweb. Now it's pretty delicate. I'm gonna tell you, there's not much holding these cobwebs together. If you, if, um, especially since I was just over that two inches, if I got a little bit more than two inches over, I would have had a little bit more keeping things together. If I was under two inches, the whole thing's probably would have just come apart. But that, I mean, part of that's okay. I don't mind that. I can just still just stack them fine when putting my border together. And I'm just lining things up. I have one last piece to do, slide this in. I kind of have to hope that my piece here cooperates. I may have to flip it over. Yep, I'm gonna have to flip it over because he's not gonna cooperate. He's not gonna wanna stay. 
So what I'm doing is I'm lining it up here. I'm gonna flip it over and just double check. See, I'm double checking to make sure that piece stayed in there square. And now I'll punch. And there we go. I just wanted to make sure that last little piece did not get cattywampus in there. I mean, great thing here, you can look at, you can start to like turn these if you wanted to make a circle out of them. I have not tried this going, making circles, but there we go. I'm gonna put on some repositionable adhesive. and just adhere this right down the middle. Now, if you have the stickers, there are some stickers obviously that you can play with here. You can, um, there is a lovely spider sticker that will come in here great on your cobweb. You gotta be careful when you take the spider off because he's got those tiny little legs, the thin legs and I could put my spider on there. Or, and I probably will put that on there. Um, if you happen to have the old Halloween, I mean, it probably has a more technical name that has all those little shapes, There, there's a spider in there. So you could come in and grab the spider from there and put little spiders on there. I'll probably do that even with the, um, the big spider too. You can see the cute little spider on there. All right, so that's the second border. So those are the two borders I wanted to put together for Scrapbook Live. So that first one did take a little bit of time, a little bit more effort. Um, there's, I probably did do the longer way of putting it together. Sometimes that's just my process, um, especially when we're still just trying to work through things on how we want it to get together. And then we come up with the ways that'll make it a little bit faster the next time we make it. All right, so I wanna talk about, this next bit we're gonna talk about is gonna be uh, September bonus three. I wanted, I, like I said, I mentioned, I've had some people ask me about this from the bonus sketch. The last week we put together bonus ske uh, sketch number one. And I had from bonus sketch number three, there was some people that were asking me how to do the um, angled cut piece at the bottom. So I am not gonna to put together the whole layout. We're just gonna talk about cutting these angle pieces right there. So the one thing I want, um, we're gonna start off with is they do, they create this on a base piece of paper. So you need to have your base piece and I'm gonna use uh, just for ease, I'm gonna just use a piece of, um, if I can find it here, I'm gonna use a piece of beige cardstock. I'm working with some papers out of the Totally Tonals Summer Textures. So I've got the Red Barn that has the uh, flowers on the opposite side, this starry sky with the grass. And I'm just gonna put it on a base of the uh, beige paper, the beige cardstock. You could use any other piece that matches. And really all that beige is gonna do is it is becoming the grout lines. Those thin lines between the pieces is what, it, that's all that's gonna show through of the beige. So they have us, they wanted us to, they talk about this in um, step number five. That's what we're focused on is step number five of this handout. Like I said, you can get this handout on my website. Um, you'll find it. I did this as part of Scrapbook Live for um, uh, September 21st. So that is the article, or if you go to that blog post, you'll see this as part of the three page handout. We're going to cut a two inch strip of hexagon, or excuse me, of beige. You can, it's whatever your base piece is that you're going to build this border on. So two inches. That's what I want. Two inches. I've got my straight blade, two inches. If you wanted it to be three inches, if you want it to be wider, you can, um, this, the technique that I'm gonna show you, you can use with any width. We're gonna do two inches because that's the size they tell us. Now, 
for this, I am going to be cutting two strips of these papers. I will have four sides to work with, all right? I'll have four different patterns. You can see them here, those four patterns. You may um, want to just do one paper and work multiple sides. I will tell you, I would recommend still cutting two strips. Give yourself some room to mess up. Give yourself some room to play around with your angles. Cut two strips. Just when you're first learning how to do this, cut two strips at least. Even if you're just using, if I just wanted a red and a gold border, I'm going to cut two strips of this paper. I'm going to cut one strip of each. So I have two board, two strips to work with. I'm going to cut my strips to, I'm going to, I want to cut them taller or wider. So I cut this at two inches. I'm going to cut mine. I'm actually going to go to two and a half. You could probably go to two and a quarter. I'm going to go to two and a half. So I cut that one at two and a half and I'll cut this one at two and a half. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to cut these into segments. You can chunk the segments however you want. I would give yourself maybe you, I did, I think I did two, three inch segments and three, two inch segments. So I'm doing, I did two, three inch segments. So these are each three inches and I'm going to cut the rest of this into two inch segments. So you can see there, I have three two inch segments and two three inch segments. I'm going to repeat the same with this other piece. You probably could just chunk them all into three inch segments or all into two inch. I would probably default to a little wider if you're going to do the same. This part is just, I don't know. It's, there's a different, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, this is the way that I hopefully will be a place for you to start, to learn, to experiment, get you going. You can customize it from there. All right. So to get started with this, I am going to take just one of my smaller end pieces here. I've got my scissors. You're going to want your scissors and I'm going to go ahead and just do an angle cut. And I'm going to position that right here. That's my start. All right, I've started it, got my angle going. Now I'm gonna pick a different color. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do green. Green is on the back side. So if I need to flip some of these pieces over to remember my colors, I'm gonna pick green. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my green. I'm gonna grab the last piece I just angled. I'm gonna hold it on the edge. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold it with my left hand, pinch it together kind of in the middle, you can overlap as much as you need to so you feel like you get a good hold. Take my scissors and cut along that cut I previously made. Scrap, I'm just gonna put to the side. I don't know if I'm gonna need that or not. I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm just gonna put it to the side. So here's my first piece. Here's my second piece. My angles are good. I can line this up if I wanna do one edge flush on the bottom, but what I'm gonna see is as I, I'll be able to play with it a little bit. If I want a piece a little wider or whatever, I have some space there to fudge things around. Now, this green piece, I need to angle this edge. I can go wide. I could go a sharp angle. I could go a shallow angle. Um, here's where you can just kind of play with it a little bit. But you want to try to just do a nice straight cut. So there's my first wedge or my second wedge, my green wedge. Now, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna grab this yellow piece again. And maybe I'll be able to line this up. It's not perfect. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing I just did before where I'm gonna hold things in place and trim out so that my edges are the same. Actually, what I'm gonna do, this paper is non-directional. I'm gonna flip it around. Well, no, because then I'm going to have a weird edge. The goal is that you'll use the previous piece to help you cut the next piece. 
and that should give you parallel or give you those lines. So now I'll grab a blue piece. I'm using my previous piece to set my angle. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that my edges are flush at the top and the bottom. That's telling me that I'm gonna cut my angle correct. And I'm just using scissors. And you just keep working your way along. So it does take a little bit of time. The technique, as you've practiced, as you practice it, you get more confident with it. So once you really get, you know, you get things figured out, you'll see it goes by pretty quick. And you just keep working. If I decide that I want this piece to be a little wider, I can move it down. So I can change the spacing a little bit if I want more of the blue, maybe I want more of the yellow, but I want less of the green to show, you can see how adjusting top to bottom just gives you a little bit more So you just keep just keep moving along. So hopefully this will give you guys some confidence to try it, to experiment. You might find a technique as you're messing around with it that works a little bit better for you. Um, the goal is obviously just to get a, to get a border made. So it's a fun technique, but you can see I'm really working my way through those two segments of, um, those two strips that I made. So you definitely going to want to start with two pieces or two of those 12 inch strips because you're going to end up with potentially with quite a bit of the scrap. I should, I mean, I think I'm going to end it on the green here. And then I'm overhanging on this edge, so I can just cut that off. So there, it's kind of hard to see because the beige blends into my white background. I'll adhere everything into place, but you guys will see um, and then share it with you. It's, it is not that challenging. You guys can use uh, scrap bits of paper. Um, if you cut more sharper angles, you can use narrower pieces. It really just depends on, you know, what look you're going for. Sometimes, sometimes I have a tendency to chunk things a little bit bigger because I just want to get through it. You know, I don't want a lot of tiny little pieces that I'm having to um, put into place. Just make sure, I mean, right now I would not want to mess up my order, right? That would kind of be devastating. So when you're putting this together, take your time to, you don't want this to get out of order. You, I could have been tacking these into place as I was creating. Oh, and I like, that's not working because I put adhesive on the wrong side. So it just, 
goes together as such. And try to keep those grout lines the same width. This technique will, by doing it this way, you will make sure that you have, if you have any uh, patterns, like you can see here, I've got um, the, the barn wood has a definite, you know, I wanna make sure my lines stay perpendicular, that they're not slanted. So that's why taking the time to make those individual angle cuts worked out well. and just keep putting it together. I'm almost done. So when once you have it on here, you'll need to trim up, trim off the overhang. So there, that is going to be border three or the border for layout number three. So I hope that you all take the time to put this together, to share it in the Creative Memories, um, the virtual crop group. Just see here, I'm gonna come in and just trim off all these pieces. You could also use scissors. clean up this bottom edge. I had one piece that didn't cut very well. And there we go. I'll put this on here so you can see, hopefully you guys can see now, that I've got that nice crisp lines, the angled cuts. Um, in their design, they cut this border down the middle and separate the pieces. That is why in the directions, it looks like it's such a wider piece is because they've actually come in here. They say after you make it, you're going to trim off um, one half inch. All right, so you cut off a half an inch and then you separate those pieces. So they're separating the pieces. So once again, make sure you're putting on plenty of adhesive at the top and the bottom so you don't lose any piece. So you would separate it. And then that's where they have you coming down the middle. They show, they show the, um, where the eyeball piece, that eyeball border is. So you could, if you do with a different pattern, you could do, or different design, you could do something different here that would give you kind of a fun effect there in the middle. So that's how they make that border for sketch number, bonus sketch number three. So that was a little crazy. <laughs> so thanks for hanging in there. For those of you who did hang around for the entire time, I'm sure some of you maybe had to pop out. You'll come watch us on the recording later. Um, but that was a lot of fun. We actually were able to get three borders put together. I cannot wait to see the various options that you guys create, or maybe you're going to just save them for later, uh, but definitely give them a try. So um, that's our Wednesday scrapbook live. I do want to remind everyone that tonight are the Croptoberfest um, is the Croptoberfest page makers class that I'm doing with Tessa. And um, that is tonight. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. It is not too late to register. So if you're already registered, you should have received uh, the handouts already with the Zoom link. And um, if you do not have those yet, please reach out to us so that we can make sure you get put into the right spot. But you might need to check your spam box, your promotions tab in Gmail. They should be there. You can always search for my name, Megan with two Gs or Tessa's name and see if that pops up. Um, but like I said, it's not too late to register. We will also have a card class tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's all going to be recorded. We record everything. So if you cannot make tonight, cannot make tomorrow live, no big deal. You can just watch it the next time you cr um, crop um, the videos. You'll have a video link. Just take your tablet with you next time to a crop, uh, have your headphones with you, and you can scrap along with us while you're at another event. So um, lots of fun things coming up there. And then of course, um, well, next week's the beginning of October. So um, we also have um, 
Golden Harvest. The Page Makers class is next week. I knew there was something I was forgetting. Golden Harvest is next week. So that's on the 4th. And then later in October, we will have our Power Hour. So we will have a project next week for Scrapbook Live. I don't know what it is yet. We'll see. I have to figure that out, um, but we'll get that event posted so you guys can um, get it on your calendars and we'll plan to see everyone soon. All right. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye.